Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 10, a surprise edition of Conversations with Love on the Backbreaker Media Network. As always, I'm your host, Spencer Love. We're proud members of the Win Column Sports Network, where you can find your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of wrestling. And once again, as always, got to give my shout out to Beercade YEG, the home of Edmonton Wrestling, where just over three weeks from today, Hayden and I, the brothers of discussion, will be live in the flesh and everywhere on social media, hosting Over the Top Rope Live, previewing this year's WrestleMania. But we're not here to talk about WrestleMania. We're here to talk about Albertan wrestling and there's probably no one that exemplifies that phrase more than my guest on this week's episode Chris Parrish for those of you who are on your way down to Vegreville today you are set for a genuine Alberta independent dream match this is a personal dream match of mine Michael Richard Blaze God's gift to wrestling versus the aforementioned Chris Parrish the current pure power wrestling heavyweight champion and a hell of a guy, a guy I genuinely consider a good friend, a guy I always enjoy listening to, uh, not only talk about wrestling, but on Sounds of Struggle, anything that that guy wants to talk about, always enjoy it, and that's why I'm always so excited to have him on the podcast, there's no sense in me overselling, so I'll let Parrish and Maniac oversell for you, here's a quick word from Sounds of Struggle, and then we jump right into my interview with Chris Parrish, prior to tonight's action, taking on Michael Richard Blaze. Well, this is Chris Parrish. And Maniac. And if you want to hear a podcast that's a little bit of all right. And Strugglicious. Yeah, man. If you want to get involved with everything that is pro wrestling, everything that is, what, NHL, NFL, NBA? Nah, not really, but a little bit of yeah. that and uh, baseball. Yeah, ball sports. Ball sports. Then come to Backbreaker Media, which is a division of Wink Call and Sports Network, and listen to the sounds of struggle. Sounds of struggle! And let me tell you this if you're not into the sounds of struggle, then guess what? We don't care. Because we only like the people that listen to us. That's true. And, and, and that, listen to that. We're out of time. So, on top of that, we say later, bitches. Welcome back. It is Conversations with Love on Backbreaker Media. We're a proud member of the Wind Column Sports Network and proudly sponsored by Beercade YEG. So you can check out each and every WWE pay-per-view at 105th Street and 82nd Avenue at the home of Edmonton Wrestling with the Brothers of Discussion, Spencer and Hayden Love, one of which is me, your hosts of Conversations with Love, and joined by... Well, a friend by this point, a co-worker, a great professional wrestler. The accolades are numerous, but I am joined by Chris Parrish. The guy who also crashes every Facebook Live video you do at Beer You don't crash, man. Like, you're, you're invited by this point. You're the third person in this triumvirate. You're taken away from my street cred, brother. Look, that's okay, brother. I'm a rebel without a clue. Just don't work yourself into a shoot when it works to work, brother. I Welcome shoot back. enough blanks anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Welcome back, man. We're actually, we are at the same Boston Pizza we were at when we first met, which is pretty cool. The first time you did an interview, that was even prior to when we were calling this conversation. Is that still. like serendipity or something? No, I think is it was that? just out of convenience. I think yeah. you had a show that night as well. Very excited to have you back, man. Lots has changed in the 6 to 12 months since we last spoke on podcast. Only because we can't remember. Well, that's exactly it. It's it's somewhere in that date range. But a ton's gone on, man. You've left Monster Pro Wrestling. You're currently with Real Canadian Wrestling. You're also embroiled in a feud with, well, I guess a ton of people. Yeah. But Pride, Mo- MRB, in what's basically been like the Alberta Indie Dream. I also became feud. the Pure Power Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. You haven't let me get to the end of this, man, but either way, a lot's happened, so I really want to start with the first thing that I've got on my docket here. Monster Pro Wrestling, a former champion there, both yourself and uh, and your partner in Tag Struggle, Maniac, have moved on from the promotion, both headed to Real Canadian Wrestling. I guess why the switch? Opportunity. Number one was opportunity. Uh, when you get chances to work multiple shows a month instead of the one maybe two if that that's a stretch uh that's a big thing i'm a wrestler we want to wrestle 
Uh, more times we wrestle, the more times we also get paid. So as the businessman in me, who doesn't want to make more money? 100% man, and finally yourself and Maniac have already tagged together this year. You only tagged together once last year. Was that another big reason? Is that you and uh, you and your tag struggle, and I guess your cheap plug for sounds of struggle. You guys all heard the commercial, but your co-host Maniac finally tagging together. Is that another big reason for the move? Uh, yeah, I think that is included in the opportunity. You get the opportunity not only for myself and Maniac to do more tag wrestling, but I also get more opportunity to wrestle guys that I haven't wrestled. Fresh feuds, fresh rivalries, fresh matchups. That's a big one too. Um, eventually, I will switch beers that I drink because I want to try something new. <laughs> um, however, you know, who says you can't go home? I'm talking about the beer, not about MPW. But at the same time, <laughs> this is a wrestling world. Never say never, right? Fair enough, man. And already, you've you've had a couple of great matches. I mean, Sydney Steele, you've sort of been in this feud with Dirty Ink outside of your. Alberta Indie Dream feud. I guess why are you didn't really pick your opponent in that sense and that they came after you guys right off the bat, but like how does it feel going up against those guys after what I believe is your first time facing guys like Cody Chimera and uh, and Sydney Steele? Well, I think the whole thing was when And Cameron Stevens, sorry to cut you off there. I just don't I don't want to leave one guy out. Well managed by Dirty Mike Jones, <laughs> by the way. You haven't uh, wrestled him, nor do I think you're going to wrestle him. Well, he's a manager, and I've had dealt with him once, by the way. Um, no, I think, too, uh, a lot of it came down to when I went and announced with uh, Mike the Ref uh, during the Triple Threat uh, show with Nicole Matthews, uh, Envy, and Angelica. Yeah. Uh, you also see the debut of RCW with, from Manai, who yep. wrestled Sydney Steele. And he saw Dirty Ink kind of get in there. At that time, I was there just to announce. So I didn't get invested. Plus, it was a conflict of interest for me as I was still an MPW employee at the time. 100%. Um, however, when I made the switch, I went out just to, you know, cut a promo. Dirty Ink. And an excellent one at that. Well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Dirty Ink decided to come out. Um, and really kind of stick their nose in my business. So uh, that was also kind of just, you know, how it was. I guess it just shows the attitude. Uh, I actually have wrestled Cody Chimera uh, at the last... Excuse pure, me, my apologies. Chimera. At the last uh, Pure Power Wrestling show, the Power Rumble. For your aforementioned Pure Power yeah. Wrestling Championship. Yeah, who was actually uh, managed by Dirty Mike Jones. So it was the first encounter for me for with both of them. Yeah. Um, and then it was my first encounter with Cameron Stevens during the, the tag match during that show where I debuted because that came down to a tag match between Sydney Steele, Cameron Stevens, Maniac, and myself. Right. So uh, we found out very shortly that, you know, as members of the One World Empire, members of Tag Struggle 3, where we had issues... We were giving other people issues with the numbers game. Now we're kind of uh, on the other side. So I guess reaping the uh, reaping the other side. I mean, if literally we, from one of your. Yeah, I guess if we taught Sydney Steele anything in OWE, numbers matter, right? Fair enough, man. Numbers like, don't lie. That's my Ty <laughs> Dillinger reference of the day. Oh man, I was gonna say like I thought that was your Steiner math reference of the day. No. No, I'm not gonna make any Steiner references. Come on, man. As as many of them are made there's never enough steiner math out there as mentioned however i don't no. think it ends that's the problem well 33 and a third percent of the time it ends it's uh it's great to see you in an rcw ring is there anybody outside of sort of your your current feud with dirty ink that you wanted to specifically wrestle in the movie uh, like obviously when you talk about opportunity you couldn't just look at that entire roster and say i want to wrestle everybody i mean i know that's sort of your character and you will wrestle everybody but who specifically do you have your eye on well when you look down the roster you can look at the champion andrew hawks when you look at the heavy metals the big chests uh even doing more stuff with pride which i am currently doing uh but then you look at like son of irish who i've known since the day he was born um but then you also look at sweet daddy souls of the world you also look at you know the dirty eggs and then you even look at possibly the tag struggle matchups we can have whether it's nvr whether it's uh bradley graham and steve rivers again 
Oh, we have unfinished business with those guys. In the You've got unfinished past. business with everybody, man. So, I mean, and then there's going to be unfinished business that I want to create with new people. So, I mean, it's just, <laughs> you know, this is the name of the game. But, I mean, I can give you answers, but at the same time, why give you answers when we can create action? Fair enough, man. Now, we've talked a fair amount about Dirty Inc. The other thing I want to ask you about that's genuinely the biggest news on the Alberta independent scene out there. Yourself, Pride, Michael Richard, Blaze. The three of you guys have not been separated since January 9th out in Radway when you interrupted what many people called the inaugural Alberta Indie Dream Match. Now, you matched up with Pride out in Bruderheim, I guess a few weeks ago. I'm bad with dates. It was the 16th of February, I believe. You're going up against Michael Richard Blaze. You're going up in a triple threat against them out in Radway coming up. Like, I just want to get your thoughts on the thing. Pretty like, fitting that the uh, second time or the scene of the crime, the return of it, yeah. is a triple threat. But, I mean, to me, I think the triple threat is a bigger match than that seems. 100%. Plus, if you're going to take a PWA and an RCW superstar and put him in the ring and say, all right, here's a dream match. Okay, well then MPW interfered and that's exactly what happened. Absolutely, and now you're the PPW champion. I mean, it's been very, very interesting to me that this is the first real time, and I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that all three of you can individually be considered for your respective reasons some of the best wrestlers in Alberta. So it, it is the first time that you're really seeing people cross boundaries, whether it be PPW or like RCW has just been fortunate enough to be able to host the matches because with, you're not in a major location. With the real exception being the CWC from 2017, uh, you never saw the three of us interact at all. Mm -hmm. And even then, if I remember correctly, that was in a Rumble match, correct? Uh... No, uh, the time uh, the three of us actually were in, interjected in one in the same match was actually a kind of a Survivor Series elimination tag okay, match. Okay, there we go. Um, it was actually the night I became CWC champion. Which I just want to throw out here is, to this date, still a record-setting, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't care <laughs> what Pride says about his uh, Alberta title. One, the company is no more now. So, I mean... 100%. And we'll get your so thoughts on So it doesn't really event. count in my eyes. <laughs> I mean, you can't, if that's the case, then I'm still the longest reigning CNWA provincial champion in ever. And I'm still undefeated. Congratulations. So, I mean, like I said, like, <laughs> and then Maniac is still one half the Gold Dragon Wrestling Tag Team Champions. And the accolades just add up for the two of you guys. Yeah, like, it's, it's pretty cool. It's pretty stupid if you're counting <laughs> uh, companies that died. Um, but I mean, like RCW is doing a promotion of, like they're doing a show there. But I mean, I just don't count them as an inner promotion when it's really an RCW show, not a CWC show. Absolutely, man. So. It's it's just so very cool for me to see that you and I have talked a lot about the need for whether it be promotions or individual wrestlers or anything like that. Like I'm a firm believer in the fact that more and more you do need to expose the great talent we've got here in Alberta to the widest audience possible so this isn't meant as a knock on the PWA but it's very cool to me the fact that fans out in Gibbons or out in Radway or places that the PWA wouldn't normally run get a chance to see a talent like a Michael Richard Blaze or someone like yourself the PPW champion going down to Lethbridge which the more and more I hear about it, I was lucky enough to talk to Angelica about the promotion actually a couple of weeks ago, and like, the more I hear about it down there, like, they're lucky to get to see talents, as are we in Edmonton, well, but... And it's an amazing crowd down in Lethbridge, too. That's what she said uh, as well. Yeah, that is what she said, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, That's what she said. Yeah, they're pretty big down there. Uh, <laughs> but, uh... An yeah. unintentional that's what she said joke. I don't think I've even ever pulled one of those off. Yeah. Sorry, continue. But it's just it also just shows you their expansion and their uh, you know, their work as a company too, of just how much they've grown over the years. Because I remember when I first started there, they were lucky to get 30, 40 people. And then now they had over two hundred or two fifty last show. Easy. 
That's and that awesome. and that might even be like my numbers are probably even off at that point. But I mean, it was a sold out show. Uh, it was a great success of a show, and you even saw it with the match qualities out there. So uh, you saw the for, for the first time Cody Chimera and myself, you know, Lockhorn. So. Um, I know I can't say good enough things about Pure Power Wrestling. I mean, if you're in that area or even if you want to go to that area, you check out a show. What do you think the biggest difference is between going out to a show like out in Lethbridge, which, not that it's a small town, but you would lump Lethbridge in more with the Radways and the Gibbons and that than you would in Edmonton or Calgary. Well, what do you see in the difference in, to me, I in think crowds in a smaller town versus a major metropolitan city well i mean with the city you're expecting more of that big big feel like like with if you're going to say it with edmonton and calgary you have that more of a big big city feel whereas they're competing against other big cities when you get to these smaller towns they're not competing with these big cities because they know that's not something they can do what they're doing is just trying to do as much as they can um and that's where you would just from your work with the uh, Sherwood Park Crusaders, you would see Sherwood Park themselves, does, they don't have a lot going on within the city, but almost, you know, a team like the Crusaders has a reason to bring the town together. 100%. And that's what Lethbridge has with the Lethbridge Hurricanes, uh, who are, you know, doing phenomenal right now. Uh, but then you also have Pure Power Wrestling, which is completely different uh, from anything else that they have, whether it's sports or even events put on. And this is something you can see every month, all year round. And yeah. There's no off season, and it's one of those things where you just see families come together, you see people come together, and then it's just a, a very tight group that has put these shows on. And you've seen the switch in kind of ownership and direction over the years. But with that being said, it has done something that has brought, I think, the community closer together, and they've done so much. Uh, good for the community too so that when at the end of the day you're looking out it's a positive thing so if you're going to go to Lethbridge they're going to talk about oh you got to check out one of these shows now it's a staple of what you can experience when you go there very cool man luckily enough RCW goes out to a ton of towns like Lethbridge well not Lethbridge specifically but at Gibbons or, or Radway is there anywhere else specifically that you would want to wrestle in Alberta that you haven't gone out to yet? I've never wrestled in St. Albert. Really? I've, and that's where I live. That's where I'm from. That's why I'm sort of surprised. It's like you even think with CWE I, or something I, along well, those lines. Well, I've had opportunity, but it's just that they haven't lined up. <laughs> um, so they're just, you know, things like, just little things like that. I mean, I would love to go back to the, all of the like towns I played hockey in when I grew up and just wrestle there. I mean... So, I mean, I would like to wrestle in Calgary more, and I have that opportunity ahead of me in RCW, and that's something that will happen more uh, as we grow. Um, I love the time in Red Deer. I think Red Deer is another uh, kind of, it's not a, it is a smaller city if you compare it to the Calgary's, but it was a, an expanding city where you saw the growth coming to it, and you just saw the growth in the people, and then, the close-knit of like all the fans coming together and experiencing things you just saw that vibe and that is the vibe that's very cool and entertaining and very much you're proud to be a part of when you're involved with those companies absolutely man well when we come back from this break on this week's edition of conversations with love it's interesting you bring up red deer because we're going to talk about the recent merger between the cwc and rcw because i think it's a very very cool thing not only for the promotions but for the town so when we come back we're going to hear a quick word from our friends over at power slam tv and then we're going to talk a little bit more about the great province of alberta and the great wrestling we got here with my guest this week chris Parrish, pwi ranked wrestler ppw champion and a whole bunch of other initials He's the champion of We're going to come back and talk to him after this break on the Beercade sponsored podcast hosted on Backbreaker Media, Conversations with Love. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. 
Welcome back to Conversations with Love. Thank you to our friends at Power Slam TV for sending over the commercial so that I didn't have to make it. It's appreciated. It's also appreciated that I am joined today by Chris Parrish, one of the most decorated wrestlers in Alberta wrestling. Prior to the break there, we were talking about RCW, we were talking about the CWC, and we were talking about Red Deer. Three things that, as of April 13th, will all be coming together with RCW and CWC's merger and the show taking place, as mentioned, on April 13th. Parrish, I just sort of want to get your thoughts because you're a guy who some of the RCW roster has wrestled for both companies, but you're a guy who was very, very ingrained in the CWC. So what do you think that the merger means for both wrestling fans in Alberta and specifically in Red Deer and for yourself specifically? My comments as a wrestler and a fan are different. That's why I asked you two different questions. I, <laughs> to me, I think as a fan, I should be disappointed. Okay. And I, I think that's the honest truth. And I think the reason why, because I think CWC opened up a lot of eyes and it was, I think, the closest competition for RCW that actually made you think, wait a second and you know me I like competition I was the only advocate for these shows these companies doing shows on the same day I was one of the, those few and it hurt MPW which I was a part of but I liked it I liked well, the competition well and it's I guess to paraphrase Charlotte Flair here like iron sharpens iron right exactly. so but, if you've got that opportunity to be the, to, opportunity excuse me to be either putting on a show on the same day or giving yourself that opportunity to really prove you're better, this does sort of take it away, right? But because I think, too, the fan that normally went to CWC shows knew what they were going to get. But when you go to an RCW, CWC show, there's going to be changes. Whether it's with the roster, whether it's the presentation, it's just going to be different. And that's not going to say it's a bad thing or a good thing. It's different. But it is and, a thing. But the reason why they or the reason why a lot of fans went to CWC was because CWC was what it was so now that it's different it's not what it was anymore so there might be that turn back because as a wrestler I think you know it's still fantastic that we have that opportunity as a member of RCW it's great that they're expanding into a, a plot, like a city like Red Deer and they have the platform with an associated act like CWC that had a very established act in Red Deer. So I think that's gonna benefit RCW moving forward. So what do you think that they're gonna need to do to sort of, not that they've lost any goodwill, but like you said, it is different. So what do you think that Real Canadian Wrestling is gonna need to do differently, or what are they gonna need to change when they go into Red Deer as far as presentation or anything like that, to not only retain the fans that they've currently got there, but to build on what the CWC did. I think the smart thing is to show is to show the people, look, you're you're not going to get CWC, you're going to get RCWC, or however you want to phrase it. But you want to give them that understanding that just because it's different, it's still good, and just because that it's different doesn't mean that it's going to be a negative impact to your perception or your train of thought of what can expect when you go there yeah so i think that's the big challenge i think as long as as a company rcw delivers in that aspect of maintaining the status quo of expectation but also in that same breath giving them something different for them to be excited for that's the best way how they're gonna do it <laughs> you know you we're gonna have to wait and find out because as talent we can only do so much as a well, business that's completely up to the mold and the business that they bring into Red Deer moving forward now. But you speak of talent, and I know you also mentioned like there there will be, not there may be, but there will be roster turnover as far as CWC workers not coming to RCW or the new workers from RCW coming down to Red Deer for the first time. So guys like yourself, guys like Pride, guys like Dylan Stone, who not only have wrestled in Red Deer, but are guys who these fans are firmly familiar with. What differences do you think they'll see in you guys? Well, and let's not forget, like, the Sydney Steels, the Maniacs. 100%. Uh, the Angelicas, the Indians. 
I mean, these are all familiar acts as well. So, I mean, there's enough familiar, uh, familiar faces for them to realize, okay, I can understand what I'm seeing. Like, you know, I can, you know, it's not too much of a shot, shot at me for being different. But with that being said, there's introduction to new faces. Um, so that's the big one, is how you're gonna do it. I, I'm in a weird position going back there because the last time I was there, I went from being a quote-unquote heel into a baby face after a two-year run as a heel. So I've never actually worked there with their the fans behind me. So it's still a challenge because the last time they saw me, I was under the mask and I helped Drew Dawkins win back the CWC championship. In an excellent moment. Yeah. There's Sometimes I've just got to interject. <laughs> but with that match, next time we're in RC, uh, like in Red Deer with the RCW show, the only familiar face I'll see out of that last scene is me. So that's a weird kind of situation to be put in. And I'm not even going to be in that same light because I, I now have uh, Mani like Maniac and I are back, which we've, we've never tagged or were associated in CWC. Mm -hmm. So it was a different concept. It was a different perception. So it's as a wrestler, how do you approach something like that? Like I've long said, man, and I will continue to say that you're one of the smartest minds outside of even just being a great wrestler. You're one of the smartest minds or, or one of the guys who I think thinks wrestling the best. So when you approach something like this where you know you're familiar to fans, but you are going to be seen in a different light or presented a different way, is that something that you feel the need to sort of bridge the gap for fans or... Like, like I, I don't want to sort of quote unquote kill the business too much, but like, do you feel the need to come in and, and let's say there's an opening promo? Is it coming out and saying last time you saw me or you know not quoting you there? But my do you feel the need to talk about something like that or bring it up? Well, if you know, like you know me, you know that I have very different analogies to things. Yes. To me, my analogy is you're bringing a different girl to meet your parents because you're familiar with you're familiar with your family but the family's not familiar with the new face your family's familiar with a different girl but you want them to like the new face because you want to bring back that face, that new face time after time after time yeah so you got to make that new face feel comfortable you got to make them feel at home you got to get them accepted so they want to also come back but also but show the, the differences. But in. then at the same time, you want your parents, your family, to want to see that face back again and again and again. Because you don't want that negative reaction of like, really? This is this is entirely back? I don't want different. To, I, I don't I don't like her. I don't want I to like see the her old again. girl better. Yeah, and that's okay. And that's kind of yeah, like you want to establish what that is. So that's my analogy to the situation we're at because you want to bring something different to the table but you also want it i think use that famili familiar faces that you have that familiarity with the fans because a lot of the talent are familiar with that fan base all right so but there's also a lot of people who aren't so that's the interesting it's finding a perfect mix of it yeah. and there's that different why there's like the difference of storyline there's a difference of mentality I'm not going to be the same Chris Parrish. Well, and that's exactly it. Is you are you're a different Chris Parrish because when you go to a different job, whether it be wrestling, cooking in a kitchen, as a nurse, whatever it may be, like you do take a different approach to a different job. And despite the fact that you, as a wrestler, are doing the same job, you're with a different organization. So. You know, you are working for a different company. What are your goals with RCW? Obviously, you talk about tagging with Maniac. You are a guy who, you haven't said anything on the podcast yet, but I know you're a guy who loves going after championships. Like, you mentioned the need for something new or looking for more opportunity. What opportunity are you chasing with Real Canadian Wrestling? Well, for Domino Championships, yeah, I want Maniac and I to win the tag team championships. I mean, I want to become the best tag team in RCW. I also want to become the RCW Canadian Heavyweight Champion. I want to own RCW like I owned MPW. I love it, man. Like, like, don't... I question a single person telling me otherwise that I didn't own that company when I was there. 
I was a workhorse. I was the guy almost every month for MPW when I was there. For, I would say, the last three years guaranteed. I wouldn't disagree with you there, man. Like, like, whether I was babyface or heel, tell me somebody who was more over there than I was. And that's where I want to get to here. But at, at the same time, I want everyone on the roster to be that over. I want everyone in RCW to want as much as I do, if not more. Because I want that competition internally in that locker room. I think one of the, one of the things I lacked in MPW was I don't think there was enough competition within the, pe- within the, the locker room. That's I'm, fair. I mean, I mean, and I hear that in wrestling everywhere I go, that the locker rooms are just more happy-go-lucky, which is a good thing. Not everyone, like, there's not a lot of, like, people who hate each other and stuff like that. You don't need which, to fight, no. but you also need to be no. competing. You're not going but, to have a great industry. Like, we, we bring it up a couple times in the podcast, but in any job, you're not going to do well unless you've got a personal yeah. goal or got somebody you're proverbially looking to get ahead of or looking to beat and like I guess in that sense is moving to RCW looking to prove yourself to the guys in MPW or the ownership at R- or MPW or anybody like that like this is what you've had and this is what I can do. Well and that's the thing I was also comfortable work in my position in MPW. I could have been in that position for a long time if I stayed but with RCW it's a completely different ballgame. I'm in a completely different spot. I'm in a completely different, on my mind, I'm, I'm the new guy, I'm not the guy. It's different, right? I got a whole new locker room that I gotta go out there and prove to why I belong in that locker room with everyone else. I gotta go in that locker room and I gotta have matches and bring in a work quality that everyone wants to say, hey, I gotta be more like that. I mean, there there's leadership qualities that I wanna bring, there's also, individual goals that I want to bring and there's also look we have a chance to be the best wrestling company in Alberta so let's shut up let's stop talking about it and let's go out there and prove it how much do you think a guy like you like you mentioned you're the new guy but it's not like you're a guy whose reputation doesn't precede him so how much impact do you think you have in there how much of a of a firm stance do you take on stuff as yes I'm the new guy but yes I'm a guy who's fucking proved himself in Alberta wrestling over the last 12 years well I think not even 12 years 13 14 15 there we go this year's 15 I just like you giving the biggest number Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, but I mean you look at the time I started heavy metal was in the game big Jess was in the game uh so I have history that goes back with just about everyone in that locker room at some point or time. Andrew Hawks was wrestling at that point. Like, there were times where, you know, if you went back a certain amount of time, in our locker room, there was only a select few that were wrestling. Steve Rivers. But, I mean, Steve Rivers has been wrestling since ever. So that's a completely different ballgame. Um, but, That's a guy you're going to have to go up against in all likelihood for the tag team championships if top talent's not able to. Uh, hey, to it wouldn't to be the first time that Bradley Graham and Steve Rivers have faced Mike and Chris Parrish for tag team titles before in the province of Alberta or in the city of Edmonton. Fair enough, man. Well, before but it's also a singles match or a, like a single tag match that people want to see because, I mean, they didn't exactly beat us when they became an PWT. Well, Parrish, as we wrap up here, I will say that's right where we're going to start don't part forget. three <laughs> of our interview here on the Wind Column Sports Network. And specifically, you're going to have part three on Conversations with Love, the first time you've appeared on two consistently named podcasts on so, this network. So are we going to just say treat this as like Jericho books where there's no actual end, there's just continuations to the next one? Oh yeah, pretty well. But okay. we do have episode limits. I do want to close out this interview here, though. Both with a look at your past and a look at your future. What I want to get from you, Parrish, is how do you like to look back on your time with Monster Pro Wrestling? And I know it's likely a ways away, but when you eventually do move on from real Canadian wrestling, what do you want your impact there to be? I I don't look so much at my past just because 
the further I go back, the more I lose track on where I want to go. Okay. Um, I also look at the fact that I can go back and reflect on my time because I know my time with MPW is over now. So I look back and I look at where I started and look where I came or I came to. I wouldn't have been able to do the things I have done had it wasn't for those those years and those times. But with that being said, I also became opportunistic at times to take advantage of situations while there and now it's instinctual whereas with RCW I look at a spot where I'm not starting from scratch in terms of my learning process uh, there's still a lot for me to learn I don't think you stop learning and wrestling but at the same time where I want to go is a place where I don't think I had a chance to get to an MPW so yeah at the end of the day I want to be kind of looked at as the same way but just at a bigger platform fair enough man and Parrish I can't say it enough man like thank you for joining me it's always a pleasure not only having you on the show but just getting to see you man it's great 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 time how about, how about we'll wrestling. talk about my perception on the next one Absolutely, As of where, where I stand. In our next book of Jericho. Yeah. It's always great to have you on here, man. As always, I like to close it out. Here's your platform. Where can people find you outside of? And I do say that because I always get the cheap plug for all of the uh, podcasts here on the Backbreaker Media Network. So where can people find you outside of on the weekly podcast, Sweeping the Nation, Sounds of Struggle? Well, I mean, eventually I will be opening up my own singular podcast. Uh, yes, I've been talking about that for about a while now. Um, Are you still taking like name submissions on that one? Yeah, and I've actually flat out said if a worker actually gives me the best name for that podcast, I will let that guy or girl become the first guest on that podcast. And I'm going to throw... Uh, not just the first guest, but the first episode. I'll throw an extra little uh, piece in there as well. If you, yes, you don't happen to be a worker if you are a worker obviously it still applies but if you are not a worker in the wrestling industry you are more than welcome to send your submissions to chris Parrish at any of his coming up uh twitter facebook instagram wherever handles send them to him if he selects your name or your uh handle that you have selected the name at We'll throw in an exclusive piece of Wincom Sports merchandise. The hats are on the production line right now. And one of the first edition hats can be coming your way if you, yes you, name Chris Parrish's podcast. But in the sense of where I'll be, I'll be always wrestling <laughs> monthly. Or, uh, As I like give you a long-winded interruption. Real championship wrestling. We'll, we're always doing shows. Uh, we're always doing uh, shows out of town as well. I mean, there's a giant triple threat match in Radway in just a few weeks with Pride, MRB, and myself. March 29th, the scene of the crime. Where it began is where it will end. And then you also can see me every month in Lethbridge for Pure Power Wrestling defending the Pure Power Wrestling Heavyweight Championship until someone can either beat me or I just pull a CNWA and hold on to that baby forever and we have a longer championship reign again than Pride's Alberta title. Because <laughs> whatever Pry can do, I've already done before, and I'll do it again, just because I like messing with that guy. Parrish, I love it, man. I am so, so excited for the triple threat coming up on the 29th. Your guys' match in Bruderheim was absolutely outstanding. Can't wait for the triple threat because i got to be honest with you, man. If you think it's great with the two of you guys throwing a name like Michael Richard Blaze in there is only going to make it better. Where can people find you online? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Chris Parrish. Follow me on Instagram at Chris.Parrish. Um, you can always follow me on Facebook. You can always go to the shows that I'm wrestling on. I know that's not online, but hey, it'll be online afterwards. So, um, but yeah, no, come, uh, come check me out. Come follow me on either accounts. And uh, you know, always hit me up on, uh, on Facebook. I'm very interactive. Absolutely, and as much as we love the content here on Backbreaker Media, because Mike the Ref, like, friends, if there's anyone out there who does a great job on promoting slash filming slash commentating on the Alberta independent wrestling scene, Mike the Ref is the guy who does it. But if you would much rather watch the stuff live and in person 
any one of the shows that Parrish or myself have mentioned, whether it be the ones in Bruderheim, Radway, Gibbons, or just great here in Edmonton, Alberta, the great home of Alberta wrestling. I'll call it that. I'll take it. Gibbons, come at me if you want the name. Uh, <laughs> come check the shows out. Parrish will always have tickets as well as all the other members of the Real Canadian Wrestling roster, as well, I would assume, the rest of the Pure Power Wrestling roster if you're in Lethbridge and happen to want to go and check out a show. But, Parrish, thanks for joining me, man. Always appreciated. I am psyched. I know that this show will come out far after the show tonight, but psyched to watch you wrestle Sydney Steel tonight for Real Canadian Wrestling. And very, very excited to continue our endeavors here on the Backbreaker Media Network. Once again, I've been your host, Spencer Love, of Conversations with Love on Backbreaker Media, a proud member of the Wind Column Sports Network, a proudly sponsored by Beercade YEG Podcast and Parish. You've got the last word, man. Close us out here. Well, I'm just going to say this. I hear you all also have an interview coming up with Sydney Steele. I do. So please make sure you ask him what went wrong when Chris Parrish defeated Sydney Steele for the Pure Power Wrestling Heavyweight Championship at Real Canadian Wrestling's Primal Rage event. And this is why I love giving you the last word, my friend, because there's not many people I do give the last word here, but you, yes, you, have made the last word here for Sydney Steel. Sydney, prepare for answering that question and more in my next exclusive on Conversations with Love. Coming up with Sydney Steel on Backbreaker Media, a part of the Wind Column Sports Network.